me about it a couple of years ago. What exactly what's in the water? When you have your water tested, they do not tell you what's in the water that actually is going to ruin your health. You and I both know, and the listeners know because they're very educated, that the water you and I drink out there, if we have uh, tap water or RO, there's still a lot of chemicals in that. A lot of chemicals. Well, what there are is in the water. If you go to JohnEllis.com, and, and on the sidebar, click on the scientific end of it, where you'll see a virus and bacteria destruction chart. There's about 25 or 30 of them on there. And most of them, what well, you wouldn't want to know about what they can do to you. But they all have a different destruction time, each one. None of the products out there allow enough time to destroy them. Here's an example. People wonder how they get hepatitis. The hepatitis virus can withstand over 30 minutes of boiling. So let's say you had a regular distiller. The virus, of course, will go right through any filter, or whatever. But in a regular distiller, that virus will travel with the steam and survive. Just like some heavier minerals travel with the steam in ordinary home water distillers that people buy, that's why the TDS, Total Dissolved Solids, it's not 0.00. It's always more than that. Explain that. That's Explain that. They carry over. So obviously those viruses, they're carrying over also. So here's what our machines do. It's what you alluded to in the beginning of the conversation or the interview. We're heating and cooling over and over again. Now here, here's the way this developed. The doctors had thrown catering. So can you do this? We went to Corning. See, they always like the fact that we recycle the water. That part they like. To give plenty of destruction time, which nobody else does. We have 13 patents on it now with more coming down the pike. We went to Corning. And by the way, when I was developing these machines, I kept in touch on a regular basis with the Corning scientists. They developed the best lab distillers in the world with all kinds of baffles and things of that nature to keep the virus and bacteria from traveling over with the steam into the ultra-pure distilled water. So I went to Corning, and they came up with a special form of quartz for the bulb that goes on the top of the boiler of our machine. And then an aerospace firm builds the transformers for us. So the first machine we came up with was the Electron 4, and then after that, we came up with the Electron 5 with two bulbs, a more powerful dual transformer. Phenomenal. Now, the reason for that was this. You'd say, well, why not just use one bulb? Why two? Here's why. When people get these flu shots, every year they keep changing the formula. Because they, the viruses keep getting stronger and stronger. They're mutating. Like a shot that worked five years ago wouldn't work next year and so on. So the way it works is this. In the boiler, we throw it to the surface. Like when you boil water in a stove, it'll, at some point it'll start to froth. We throw it to the surface, your viruses your bacteria, your drugs, your markers, whatever diseases those people have that they're flushing into the groundwater. We throw them to the surface, then we hit it with high intensity ultraviolet modular frequency and heat. The water goes from the boiling to the boiler feeder tube into the condenser tank, and yet it's a very small, lightweight machine, only weighs for about four and a half pounds, and it goes back and forth. <clears throat> now, we don't do that once, and we don't do it twice. We do it three times a minute, hundreds of times, for every gallon you're making. 